Welcome back to the lab, folks. So in some of my projects that I've been doing, uh, you've seen me use custom panels and I've gotten questions about those and, and what they are, they're, they're just a PC board. So what I'll do is I'll go into the PC board design application in my CAD package, which I, I use DipTrace for that. And I just lay out the panel. So here it is, the panel for the last project, which was that DC load. And uh, you know, these are holes, so you just plop a hole down and size it up, put it where you need to put it. And, and this here, this is a cutout. So if you go in here, you see it, it is a board cutout. And you just dimension it for what you need and place it where you need it. And then what you do is that you create Gerber files out of this. Now, some of my panels, I did have traces on, so you can actually add copper to it. You could actually add, you know, do a, a schematic and then set the traces on it. I had uh, one project that I did, I don't know if I got showed you guys that, where I did a time-based distribution unit and it had several BNC connectors on the front panel. And so I had a common ground between all those. So it, that particular project did have copper on it. So you, you can add copper if you need it. You could even put circuitry on the back of it or even on the front of it if you want to get a kind of a funky look. And uh, then what you do, you, like I say, you create the Gerber files and then pop on over to PCB way. So what, what you do here at PCB way is that you set down one layer. So you'd say it's a one layer board. This particular panel that we I just showed you had no copper. So you'd say, say none for the copper layer. And put the solder mask on the top side and the silk screen on the top side. Now, again, you could, if you had silk screen on the back as well, you could select uh, on both sides. And the same if you wanted to have the uh, color on the back rather than just a plain fiberglass. You uh, just click on both sides and then you order up your board and uh, away you go. So that's it. That's that's how I do my panels. You get a really nice custom look and it's relatively cheap. It depends on the size. Like if it's something small, like 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters, it's, it's five bucks. And so you can do the project yourself and then you can share with other people if they want them. So yeah, it's a pretty handy way to get custom panels made. All right. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to start a new project series. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on this here. This is a power supply. But this is just the output section of the power supply, or if you will, the regulator and has a variable output on it. One of the things that I'm doing differently here, uh, if you recall that uh, power supply that I worked on a few videos back, and I'll put a link to it up above. This one here, we had a, a bunch of trouble with it. It was supposed to be a zero to 30 volt DC power supply. We could only get really 20 volts out of it. There's no reasons for that. Uh, one was that uh, the way they have arranged things here by using this emitter follower and using a single power supply, uh, they had to run the operational amplifiers at the unregulated input voltage, which uh, with this negative voltage rail down here and the positive voltage rail rising up to about 35 volts, you're putting over 40 volts across the op amps. So we had to bring that voltage down and then there's a considerable drop across the way the transistors are here because this is an emitter follower. Darlington, so you're, you're dropping about a, a volt and a half. So we barely got 20 volts out of the thing at the, in the end. It's just, it's not a great way to do it, the way it's done here. So I'm taking a different approach. With this one here, we're going to first work here on the output section or the voltage control section. And this is going to be regulated and it's, this just by itself would be a useful power supply. And then we're going to add into it a, a current control and then we'll probably beef up the voltage reference and then maybe add in a, a little light to show you that it's in current limit mode. We'll add each of those sections as we go along. So it'll be a several stage project beginning with this stage here. And what I'm doing here, so I've taken the op amp, I'm running it off its own supply. So I'm probably going to put in plus or minus 12 volts. And that would be fine for most operational amplifiers. In this case, I'm going to use a TL081. We've got this little uh, voltage reference here. So this is coming off the already regulated supply that'll be coming in plus 12. Uh, Xenodiode then is going to actually be a pretty good voltage reference. So what I'm doing is here, this uh, NPN transistor is then going to turn on this PNP transistor. So this has to be able to stand the full unregulated voltage. This has to be able to stand the voltage difference between the input and output. The same with the, the transistor here, the big 2N3055 up here, which is going to be the pass transistor. The reason I've got it like this on a, a connector here is because it's going to be off board on a heatsink. So this, this resistor, this resistor here kind of gives a, a little bit of negative feedback going into the emitter of, of this transistor. And then we put in this resistor here to provide a little bias to just to keep things stable at low output voltages. 
and uh, a 47 UF capacitor on the output here. Uh, th all those are for stability purposes. So this thing is to turn into a high powered oscillator on us. So this voltage divider here uh, sets the gain of the output section. So uh, in this case, it's about 5.7 to one. That means if we if we have a, a volt coming in into the op amp, we're going to get about 5.7 volts out. In total, since we have a, a reference that goes up to 5.1 volts, we get about 28, 29 volts out of this thing maximum. We're going to beef up this output section as we go along, and I'd like to maybe get a power supply that's good to, well, let's say five amps and 40 volts would be our goal for now. Maybe I should mention a, a couple other things. So I've got these things in here for experimental purposes. This here could potentially be a switch to enable or disable the output. I'm putting in a, a capacitor here. Uh, and the reason for that is I'm going to see what effect the capacitor there has on a, a nice turn on. And we'll test that. This is a connector going off to the regulated plus or minus 12 volts for the operation amplifier. This is the unregulated supply coming in. And I've put in a, a little ground point. And let's go look at the layout. Pretty simple, pretty small. So 86 millimeters by, oh, I don't, there we go, uh, 41 millimeters. So pretty small little board. It comes in under the 100 by 100, so $5 for five boards over PCB way. Here's the unregulated supply coming in. I'm using these big copper pores here to handle the current. So the unregulated comes in here, goes through the pass transistor, and comes out the output. And this here is a connector for the pass transistor, which has, as I said previously, be off board. Here's your op amp power coming in. And we have here the voltage control that's also off board. I'm going to send this off to PCB way today. We'll get them to build it up for us. And when it comes back in, we'll build one up of these and we'll put it through some tests and uh, figure out whether or not we're setting down the right road here. And then the second phase, like I say, would be to add some current limiting into it. And then, you know, we might, we may or may not, but we might spruce up the voltage reference a little bit by putting in a, a, an operation amplifier or a TL431 or something of that nature. Anyway, folks, uh, thanks for coming out. That's all I have for you today. We'll see you in the next video. And thanks again to PCBWay for making this project a possibility. Bye-bye, folks.